In this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can operate at your peak performance. I'm joined here with Will Polston. So guys, here I am, I'm with Will Polston, good chum of mine, he's a fellow Essex man, Essex boy. Certainly am. Look at them teeth, you can tell that he is. <laughs> if you're listening to this, let me tell you now, the teeth are taking over. I'm actually whitening mine, I can't believe I'm saying this. Uh, on camera, look, can you see they're whiter than these, do they? Yeah, they're getting there, they're getting Yeah, I've got all the, the stuff like that, I just thought, well, you know, you've got to look after yourself, haven't you? Yeah. Um, but they're not as white as yours. Oh, I think mm. we need to turn the lights well, down. We're going to have a white off. <laughs> yeah, have a white off. That's very good. Um, I, I was in NatWest yesterday at their head office in Bishopsgate in London, and uh, I was talking to 200 potential future entrepreneurs, um, and it was a bit of a personal development session, so I weren't doing the usual business stuff. And I loved it, Will, and I know that your business... Well, tell, tell us what you do rather than me talk for you. Uh, so, in, in short, I take people from where they are to where they want to be. Um, and do that via getting them to get great results, live an amazing lifestyle, and make a difference along the yeah. way. Okay, well that is short and sweet, and it, I suppose that's the right heading. So yeah, I was with 200 kids yesterday, they were about 18, 17, 16-ish, no one chance when they about that? Yeah. He's saying yes from backstage 16, game. 17, I think. 16, 17, hopefully he picked up that voice. Um, and they were good kids and they really, um, some of them wanted to be entrepreneurs, definitely a lot of them wanted to be leaders and they had to create a business. Um, and they got me in to do um, a presentation on, you know, what high performers do, what peak performers do. Uh, and so I put together sort of 20 slides on a flip chart, obviously, as I always do. Uh, and I spoke through it. Um, but I think I was talking there from entrepreneurship, you know, like what makes a great leader. So my, my big thing is maybe, I think the way I like this conversation to do is I want to say something, you review it, you mm. say something, play, and I'll review play, it. Play yeah. tennis across That's the... what we do, just as we rehearsed. So, um, <laughs> I, I, so one of my big things I was saying to them, I if you want to lead, you've got to read. Um, and I was talking that you know, poor people have big TVs, rich people have big libraries. Mm. So what do you think about reading? Yeah, massive advocate. In it's, it's interesting because I, I grew up um, ironically not wanting to read. But the early Me too. The last book I read, I remember I was like year six at school was the first Harry Potter. I couldn't even get into the second one. Yeah, yeah. I just hated it. Um, I didn't read another book until I was eighteen years old. Yeah, and then what was that book? Uh, it was The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. So. <clears throat> See, this is the big thing, right? For that's what I was saying to these kids. Like, they did not know the book Shoe Dog exists. Now, if you're an mm, entrepreneur oh, business owner, book. so I just said to them, I, I, I always trick them. I go, like, guys, if you, um, <laughs> maybe like we, night trainers. I, I don't know if we can put a little slot of that in. Can we do that, chance? Yeah. yeah, let's put it in here. This is what I said because I think this is uh, good. Who would like to spend six hours with the founder of Nike? I don't want to keep this like between us. I'm not going to tell Group Two. You go on this website. Right? Don't tell anyone about it. And there's like this thing at the top called a search bar. And you put in these words, shoe dog. And for about 20 quid, you can buy this book where the man that started Nike, who is like the fifth richest man in America, tells you exactly how he did it. So for 20 pounds, you can have six hours, one-on-one -on -one consultation with the fifth richest man in America on exactly how he did it. So I hope you enjoyed that. You see, basically what I did is I tricked them. I said to them, um, as you just saw in that bit, I said, look, who wants to spend six hours with a billionaire, the guy that founded Nike? I've got a gift that you can do this. And basically I just say, get yourself on for a secret to Amazon, as you've just seen in there. Um, and then you can, for 15 quid, you can spend six hours. And that, that I, it was like a bit of an aha moment. I could see it in their faces. They did not know that existed. They didn't know Richard Branson from Virgin had wrote a book about how he'd done it. And they were like, it just, you can just literally model successful people far easier than they could have done 20, 30 years ago. And I, I just love that. Um, so I think reading helps you leading. Um, and you just got to read the right books, yeah, because I actually referenced it yesterday, Will. <laughs> I'm not talking about reading bloody Harry Potter. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about modelling successful people, seeing that it hasn't been easy for them. Because I think, well, what do you think about that in terms of people realising that is, because I think people think other people have got it easier and it's just not the case, is it? No, it's not. I mean, I, I come from school, my, my schooling, if you like, is is in neurolinguistic programming, so NLP. And Mate, what is that? No one knows what that is. Okay, so well, well, I, I, I like know. to call it the art and science of personal excellence. And 
But, but neuro is effectively your senses, so yeah. how we use our senses. Linguistic is communication, not just how we communicate in terms of words of us talking, yeah, yeah. but how we communicate with ourselves and programming. Everything we do runs on a program. So it's... Uh, I need an example. An because example of... What? How you use it, or... So it's a, it's a form of psychology, if you like, that you can use... So people do, because people are using this every day, they just may not be aware You're using it every day. Yeah but they might not be aware. So the smart people, oh, yeah, go on, go dig deeper, sunshine. So the, the, it's, it's not the easiest thing to explain in the world, but neurolinguistic programming is essentially how you can change how someone feels via how you're communicating with them. Yeah. So if you, if you, so when you're presenting that, and you're yeah. up there and you're doing something, you're saying so much, what you did with those kids yesterday, yeah. you said something that created uh, uh, a, a changing how they were thinking, a changing yeah. how they were feeling, as a way of you were communicating. So you were using NLP in its rawest form yesterday. Yeah. So, so changing behaviours. Yeah, exactly. So teachers do that to kids all the e time. Everybody's doing it, but a lot of people aren't conscious that they're doing yeah. it. So a cuddle can change someone's behaviour if yeah. they're feeling shitty. Yeah, yeah. Give them a little cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got them back up there. Yeah. So, but you practice it in a. Um, so, so, so you can learn how to do this. Because I suppose it's like, so, so one of the kids yesterday said to me, they said, have you got any tips on public speaking? Mm. I get asked that a lot because I'm doing it so much. And what I find is most people, when they go on stage, they turn into someone that they're not mm. and the audience disconnects from them. And if you think about all the people that we know, like and love that go on stage, whether they're a singer, whether they're a public speaker, whether they're a teacher, um, they're just the best version of themselves, themselves. Yeah, on yeah. stage. And that needs to be remembered, you know, and, and, and I suppose that's what you're trying to, is that, I mean? It is, it, it, so the thing I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed with psychology, I'm obsessed with what makes people successful. So we talk about people like want to spend time with billions. I'm, I'm very fortunate that one of my uncles is a billionaire. So um, yeah. I've always looked up to him and I've, I've always had him on a pedestal, not so much on a pedestal now, because I try not to put people on pedestals. There's things that I do to try and collapse that, but. Um, Why? Uh, because. What happens is you start to infatuate someone, whereas the reality is what you see, if you're looking up to someone, yeah. what you're doing is you're putting yourself effectively below what they are, whereas you own those traits. Those traits will be in you, yeah. but you're being too modest to admit them in yourself. They may not yeah, be to yeah, the yeah, level yeah. that they're at, but you've got those traits, and when you own those traits, you can bring yourself to... So, so is that equilibrium. different to modelling him? Um, so yeah, mo modelling... And, and the way I like to use modelling, where a lot of people don't look at it, is take a recipe, right? If you're going to bake a yeah, cake, yeah. I know you love a cake. Yeah, right? yeah You yeah. love a cake. And, Coffee and uh, walnut. <laughs> and in order to truly create a great cake, there's four things that you need. You need the ingredients. Yeah. Then you need the amounts and the quantities. Yeah. Then you need the order and sequence, and then yeah. you need the intensity and duration. You get yeah. any of that out of place, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. creating the cake. Yeah. Yet when people are modelling other people, they're going, yeah, but I'm doing what they're doing and I'm not getting it. Well, yeah. what is, are you not doing it for the intensity and the duration? Are you doing it in the wrong order? Yeah, um, yeah. Have you got the wrong amounts and quantities of the amount of which you're doing yeah, it? No, and that's where people, so many people go wrong. So when it comes to modeling, but the other thing where so many people go wrong with modeling, this is the part that I'm obsessed, literally obsessed with, yeah. is it's not just about what people do, it's about how they think. What most people don't, they go, I wanna know what you do, how do you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But what they don't ask is, what are you thinking when you're doing oh, that? That's a great one, Will. Yeah. What, what are you power. thinking? And that, that, yeah. that for me is the, the key. I want to get into people's psychology. Like Shoe Dog, amazing book. What most people don't understand with Phil Knight is the, the stuff that he went through when he was building Nike and the, the yeah, troubles yeah. and all of the, the mad stories. Like, I mean, how cool would it be to sit down for yeah. an, an well, hour with that what guy? What I and, tell and, people and, when they read that book is like his success really didn't happen for like 35 ish years. You know, that was a multi million pound turnover business. but really didn't make money until the sort of the you know the last third of his life mm. you know and that, and that that is uh, you know people can't fathom the, f the first eight years he worked another job didn't he yeah and and people are like, oh, I'm not a business owner because I'm, I'm not a business owner because I've not got a job and again even then it, any word that we have we give a meaning to and yeah. it's people's interpretation of what that word is will decide whether they think it or yeah. not and um, uh, yeah, he, as a, uh, what yeah. I love, you know, about him is he was he, you know, and in my big belief of a successful business owners from the get go, he was like trying to build a business, mm. an investment, and so he was doing that other job so that his investment and his business could flourish. 
whereas most people want to use it, their business as a job and not yeah. let it breathe because it takes years, doesn't it, for businesses to be sustainable, cash flow generative on their own. But I think that's where most people still don't understand. I mean, if you've only got to read um, Rich Dad Poor Dad to really understand it, we need to about his quadrant of understanding what a business owner is. So a lot of people, as you know, they think they're a business owner when they're not, they're a business operator. Yeah. You know? and, and that's, that's, right, that's, that's, that's the, the thing where a lot of people... Well, are, I, I get frustrated for people. You know, I, I have no problem with people not wanting be business owners and and I think they're probably happier people mm. you know I think some of my team that haven't got the you know the, the buck doesn't stop with them are much happier than probably I am just because of the amount of stresses now I think that will change in another 10 years I'm thinking I'm gonna have like a glory life in 10 mm. years time but I don't think that it's for everyone to invest another 10 years you know because especially you've got kids and family you, you've got to enjoy the now and my point is my point is that it's not for everyone to go and build a big business and understand or build something that can work without them because they haven't got the staying power to do it. Yeah, so this is where I challenge that. In yeah. that I, I think that... I, I welcome the challenge. Where, where, where a lot, for a lot of people is I think everybody has the ability to do it because they can learn, right? Yeah. But what a lot of people haven't connected to with this. Yeah. This is be a what, good what, what, what a lot of people haven't connected with is the reason why that they want to do it and what we value most in life comes from our voids yeah. and most people haven't really connected with the reason why they're doing what they're doing and when they connect with that and sometimes it's subconscious so it's giving them that internal drive and when they connect with that, they will push through those things and they will do those things. Whereas a lot of people, if they haven't got the reason why, then they won't do it. Mm. And that's the difference between inspiration and motivation. Inspiration comes internally, motivation comes externally, yeah. and inspiration will come from doing the things that you love doing. And if you love doing something, it's a challenge, but it's a challenge that you're inspired to do, whereas a challenge that seems like a real uphill climb you don't want to do it's normally because it's someone else's values that have been projected on you or you have um or you have taken on because you've put them on too much of a pedestal and that's why you so you know that you you're using someone else's values if you're using things like i need to do this i should do this i ought to do this yeah yeah rather than i love to do this i want to do this there's yeah, a difference yeah. so i take all of your points on board but from a business point of view and you know, I've coached lots of business owners, I've met lots of business owners. You know, the successful one is the one that says, I want to earn £100,000 a year and I want to work two days a week. Mm. And the other successful one is saying, I want to earn a million pounds a year. I love what I do, I'm happy to work seven days a week. And in both situations, they are right, but completely different. Yeah. And I, I, I support both methods. Yeah. And what I'm trying to say is that this person doesn't want to do that, the bigger monster creation, because they want time freedom. They they don't they can't, because I'm telling anyone that that you meet that's built a business that of size have gone through things that most people just cannot handle. They, they they're you know I can handle more stress than most people. That's my opinion. Mm. Um, now there's other people that can handle more stress than me, and so on and so forth, uh, or. Maybe the word isn't stress, more challenges than most people. I can see through challenges. Yeah, so this is where I come back to what, what you're inspired to. So you will look at them as a challenge and you say you can see through them, your big picture thinking, blue ocean thinking, yeah. all, all of those things, all of the learning you're doing, the reading, connecting. I know you love connecting with people, not yeah. just other people in different industries, people in your industries. And yeah. I've had the pleasure of meeting people that have, have, have sort of been your mentors, if you like, and, yeah. um, and you're downloading from them. So you're collapsing sort of decades into days by yeah, yeah, by, by, by learning from those people. Um, but the difference See, is, is you're, a... <laughs> you're inspired to, you're inspired yeah, to yeah. do it because you've got a reason why. So I talk about people connect with your North Star. Like, what is your North Star? What is the thing you really want? So you said you've got the successful business owner that's earning 100 grand a year working two days and there's the successful business owner that wants to earn a million pound a year. Well, for me, success is subjective. Everyone's definition of success is different. Yeah, so yeah. get clear on what your definition of success is, create what that is. And, yeah. and when I talk about North Star, like, what's your ultimate goal? What ultimately, yeah, yeah. if there was no... Um, That's your uh, big vision. Your, your big vision, and then reverse engineer do, that 10 year, 5 year, 3 year, 1 year, 19 year goals. The problem is with that, yeah, and I was yesterday with these, these 16, 17, 18 year olds, 
about eight out of 200 really knew what they wanted mm. their end game to look like, what their vision of their life was. Um, and that's a challenge, mm. not for business owners, because they know when they start that they want to build something, but that's the, the smallest part. Most people don't know why they're doing anything. And I call it war and battle plan, and I'm probably you've seen some of our content before. It's a very similar thing, a different way of saying it, that I've simplified it. So I find most human beings fight battles throughout their life, and they don't know why they're fighting those battles. Mm. They haven't got a credible war plan mm. of, because there's always going to be the battles in life, but then if you've got a good war plan, you know what battles to fight. And and I just similar, isn't it? It's, it's, it's very similar. I, I draw it. If we had a flip chart, I'd draw yeah. it out and I could make yeah. it all look all pretty. But yeah. the, the way I see it is, if if you imagine where you are now, and you've got an A4 piece of paper, and you're at the bottom here, here's where you are now. A lot of people they go right. I'm going to set my goals for the year, and they set goals, which is at, battles. Yeah, and then yeah. they set another goal, and then another goal, yeah, and another yeah, goal, and another yeah, goal, yeah, yeah. and they, they're sort of ping ponging. Uh, not and they never what's, what's the they? Um, what's the game you play where you you hit the yeah yeah I know it, the um, pin board little, pin yeah like that yeah, one yeah. you know the one, and they just pin for so what happens is they find themselves even when they're achieving their goals they're over they're um, they're unfulfilled and yeah, of course, they just yeah. feel like they're on the hamster wheel. Like, like, Whereas if you connect with your north star, for me the north star is like for for hundreds of years, thousands of years, we've used the North Star as a guiding light to direct us to where we want to go. Yeah. To my knowledge, yeah. and just my, my small little knowledge, no one's ever been to the North Star. Maybe they have, I don't know. But if, if you can create your North Star and reverse engineer that, because if you're here and this is where you want to get to, you could just ping pong and go all off here and whatever. But the quickest way to get from your North Star here to where you are now is a dead straight. So then you just go from there and reverse engineer it. Ten year, five year, three year, one year, ninety day goals. It's a bit like if you're if you want to get on a exactly plane what I do with my client. and go from London to New York, the pilot will create a trajectory. Now yeah. the pilot will fly, of course, ninety five percent of the journey, but he's following the trajectory. He's got to make changes because of the the other planes, the weather, whatever it is. <laughs> But he's got something that he's working towards and he can see whether he's on track or not. And that for me is all about, are you living congruently? And if you're living congruently, your actions are in line with your intentions. You're going in that direction and you can see where you're working towards. But the key there, in my opinion, is to not have, don't put your satisfaction on when you achieve it. Oh, I'll be happy when. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be great when, because yeah, yeah. when will never come. So, so, so basically, it's a different way of how I... It's a different way of explaining it, very similar to how I get to my clients. So business owners have understood that. Mm. The, the, the trick is, you know, the, the, what their North Star is or what mm. their war plan, what their vision is. The trick is, what about the 95% of people that don't? So I think you've got to afford yourself real good thinking time to work out what that is, which mm. most people don't do. So it, that's my view. How do you get people to know what the end in mind looks like. So, I mean, it's the, the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That is, you know, one of the habits is they yeah. know what they so, want to build or so do. Or there's, there's so how do you do that if you haven't created that will? Okay, so there's there's a, there's a few ways that I do it with people. So there's two, there's two things, um, and I, I, I run this and, and do this exact exercise for people. So when I talk about a vision, and I know you talk a lot about business vision, for me a vision consists of two elements. Yeah. A, a purpose, which is why you're doing what you're doing. It can be your life's purpose, your work's purpose, whatever it is and then your mission, what it is yeah. you're setting out to do. So for me, I really get people to connect with why they're doing what they're doing. And one of the ways that I do that, and there's a, there's a process to it, is normally what you, well not normally, what you value most comes from your voids, right? So your biggest pains are what give you what you value most. And normally that biggest pain is something that's happened to you prior to 18 years old. Yeah. So the thing that's happened to you prior to 18 years old that's been your biggest emotional pain can be the catalyst that's that, um, I need an example. So if your parents didn't give so, you any... No, I, I'll money. share my personal example. So um, um, I, I grew up, had an okay lifestyle. You know, we went on holidays every year and um, but I always had clothes on my back. It was it was good. But what, it was me, I'm one of four, I'm the eldest. My mum and dad together. My mum used to be a housewife. And, but my dad hated his job, absolutely hated it. He used to leave at five o'clock in the morning, get home at seven o'clock at night. When he used to come in, he used to moan. Just moan and moan and moan how much he hated his job, how stressed he was and all the rest of it. And one day he quit his job and was going to set up a business with my Uncle Steve. And I've got two uncles. One's a billionaire, one's a multi-multi-millionaire. But what's interesting about my two uncles is they're real charismatic guys. You know, They're the, the life and soul of the party. And I remember thinking, yes, this is it. Dad's going to be just like Uncle Steve. Long story short, that business didn't end up going ahead. My dad had already left his job. He slipped into depression. And 
for a long time, he just he would just sleep all day. He would just sleep all day. He wouldn't sleep in my mum's room. He'd sleep in my sister's room. And I saw the impact that was having on my mum, who I love dearly. And then she had to go out and start working, I think at one point it was like three different jobs to make sure that the, the, the bills could be paid and all the rest of it. And um, and I saw what was going on. And, and to be honest with you, and I've, I've told my dad this, at the time I started to resent him. But what I did do at 12 years old when this happened was I just connected the dots. I was like, this is obvious, money equals happiness. As Uncle Mark, billionaire, really happy. Um, Uncle Steve, multi-millionaire, really happy. Dad, when he worked in the city, used to make loads of money, uh, not loads of money, used to do okay, um, but was stressed and frustrated, but he's happier than what he is now when he's depressed. That's obvious money equals happiness. I went off on this tangent to earn as much money as I could, and I was the kid at school buying and selling and doing whatever I could. Um, I then fell into personal development at 18, but at 22 I had what I call my lightning moment when I realised actually it was nothing to do with money. What it was really to do with my, was my, my mum and dad and how I was trying to rescue them from the pain that they're in by sort of earning this money so they didn't have to be in the situation and I could sort of help them get out of where they were. So I was able to tap into that um, sort of uh, endless pot of fuel to want to sort of rescue them from that situation. So that was the thing for me. And when I connected to that, I just burst out with tears for 15 minutes standing at this yeah. event when I, when I had this realisation. because I was like, that is it. It isn't to do with money. It was to do with I wanted to have an impact on my family, but I just wasn't conscious of it at yeah. that time. And that was, and that is, is still now the driver for me that, that pushes me to want to do these things. Got it. And, um, and I don't want anyone else to have to go through the pain that I went through, and my, I call it pain, you know, like the emotional, psychological pain that I went through as, as a teenager and my family went through as a result of my dad not becoming the best version of himself. So my, my mission now is I want to empower a billion people to become the best version of themselves, to benefit themselves, their family, their friends, their community, society, humanity, have what I call the ripple effect, because by doing that, people can have a significant impact on other people. What a lot of people don't realise is that they can, they're like, okay, oh no, like, I won't push myself. I, I won't do what I know I'm capable of doing. Because most people know they're not operating at what they're capable of doing. But what they don't realise is potentially the detrimental impact it's having on those that they love most by them not achieving that. And that's the thing that I'm really passionate about getting people to do because of my own personal experiences. Fantastic, Well, So, peak performance, you just went, let, let's just let's just quick fire back some things that both of us believe get people operating at peak performance. You go first. So. Having the end in mind yep. is one of them. Having the end in mind, I definitely agree with. So we both agree on that. So let me think of a next thing. Um, I think, especially for people working in a business or, or running a company or an organisation, trying to operate in the very important non-urgent world. So mm. you're doing stuff that's really important but is not urgent, doesn't need to be done today. But most people are operating very important, very urgent. Yeah. I've done the thing with the kids yesterday that said, you know, if I had to get coursework in on a Tuesday, I'd do it Monday night. Yeah, yeah. And they all laughed and I was like, yeah, and all the, the lecturers laughed and they're like, yeah, that is what they do. Yeah, you know, that's, so if you can get out and be very important, not urgent, that's a good one for me. Next one for you. Um, morning routines. I don't do that, but I think it probably is correct. Yeah, massive ever Jeff Bezos routines. doesn't have a morning routine. He wakes up naturally, richest man in the world. It doesn't set an alarm. It just gets up on his own. I just think, and I do that, like, mm. I... If I have to set an alarm, I've got the ump. I've got the right raving ump. And I just love it. I read it about Jeff Bezos. He said, I don't set an alarm. He mm. said, if I wake up at 10 o'clock, the day starts at 10 o'clock. And I thought... I'm, I'm just, curious, no, though. <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah, now when you're the world's richest man, you do that. But I'm... I, and I don't know the answer to this. Maybe you do. Now, what, what, <laughs> what... Yeah. But, but what was he doing when he was growing and he was starting Amazon and I know yeah. there's, there is that photo that flows around on social media isn't there of him in the office and yeah, it's yeah. like Amazon written on like pen yeah. on the wall or something but I would, I'd like to have known what that is. Um, I definitely yeah. think I've, I, I believe routine you know like does deliver success like we make videos and we've put a rule of making them out now Monday Wednesday Friday at seven o'clock mm. now that's that's holding us to account holding us to routine like you know I hate exercise mate I exercise to eat and I just wasn't doing it so I said to my PA get me a personal trainer and you just book in the sessions mm. because I don't want to do it so I'm going to get someone else to create me the routine but you know I'm never going to be someone that gets up but I mean Aaron my MD he gets up like 
like before the birds are, mm. and he's here, and I'm like, oh, that is not for me. I prefer to work at night. Mm. Like I, I wrote some chapters of my book last night, and then I went to see, you know. So I think routine's important. You think morning routine? I, well, for you, I, I, I call personally. I, I think morning routine because, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a ma- it, for me. It doesn't matter what time you wake up, but I do believe that how you start your day has an impact, and I, I believe that people yeah. are a lot more. Um, effective when they have a a, a a good morning routine. So it's my turn now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think who you surround yourself by 100%. happens um, uh, means so much. And Jim Rohn here, classic phrase. I'm sure you know that you surround yourself by the who you surround yourself by means a lot. And he goes the five people surround yourself by. I mean, sorry, the five, my God, I can't try and get my words out here. You become the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. And I've never heard such a truer phrase. And mm. why doesn't everyone know that? I mean, it's like mm. so true, isn't it? You know, I, I, I going back to sport and exercise. I hate it. If I so on Sunday morning, I said, right, I'm going, I'm going to take the dogs for a run. I didn't take the dogs for a run. I took the dogs for a um, for a walk. Mm. <laughs> but if I was with Gabs, my PT, it would have been a run. Yeah, yeah. Because he would have pushed me and peak performance me to run. He wouldn't let me walk. Mm. And so, so, you know, in that little bit, so when it comes to business, if you want to be successful, you know, you know, so if you're if you want to make loads of money, surround yourself by people that make loads of money. If you want to be a good person, surround yourself by good people. Mm. So that's my one. Do you agree? Discipline. Yes, I do. I do. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do agree. Discipline. That's the same as routine, isn't it? Have you just copied uh, that? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Um, what else would I say? Unless you can give me an example. Um. So the exa- Yeah, I, I suppose routine. But you can you can have something that isn't necessarily in your routine that you choose to be disciplined with. Yeah. Um, you're probably going to say give me an example, aren't you? Uh, yeah, so yeah, but I suppose, yeah, but even if you're doing something weekly or monthly, example, you're making sure you're doing. Okay, I've, okay, here's one. Um, setting multiple goals, so rather than just having one big vision, but reverse engineering those yep. goals and having yep. like okay, three months. I know you do you do like a hundred day goals, don't you? A hundred things you're going to do a hundred days yeah, or something yeah, like that. that. Yep. Um, so yeah, that would be mine. Um, this is my biggest one, removing what we call mood hoovers, mm. people that are going to bring you down. So yeah, it's the, it's the polar opposite, but there are mood hoovers around you that will stop you from getting to where you want to get to. The saddest fact of life is they're probably going to be the people closest to you, mm. family and friends. Um, so you know, I left home when I was really young because the people around me just weren't on board with where I wanted to get to. Mm. Um, and so I think removing mood hoovers from your life is paramount to success yeah so true but the, the flip side to that is one thing's removing them but then also being around people that can bring you higher which Absolutely, is the, the five, yeah. five people you said about it's your turn i've got one more after that oh we'll okay um i'm going to say um oh, what am i going to say if we've only got one more my well, i forgot my last one now oh, fuck. <laughs> i'm trying to think what is uh Oh dear, Todd, you might have to cut a bit of this now. <laughs> oh, what was my one? Oh dear, it was such a good one as well. Oh, it's really annoyed me. I got it. Um, I'm gonna say effective time management. So I know you're saying about um, that is peak performance, uh, yeah. like important tasks, but just effective with your time in general. Like that is so true. Now, you find that peak performance, if they fit like when I waste time, I beat myself up about mm. it. And that, that peak performance people just they beat themselves up when time is wasted. And that, that's how you know, isn't it? If because you know deep down, don't you? And I don't mind wasting time if it's a designated leisure time. So yeah, watching a movie on the sofa, I actually don't see that as a waste of time. So I enjoy doing that. But if I waste my creative work time mm. by doing stuff that's low value um, then that's stupid yeah that's what I call high value tasks very important but not urgent tasks mm. things that are gonna yeah you know, and doing stuff that is leveraged like so I see writing a book I write the book once but actually it works for 20 30 years so the investment in time in that and that book will carry on working when I'm dead which is a real for me is great like making a YouTube video but it doesn't give me immediate results you're gonna do your last one there's one other one that i think go on go for it yeah. resilience oh that's what peak performance have yeah that's a good one that wasn't my one i love that yeah i think oh i've just stolen the last one so, so, i've got a thing how you get resilience though you've got to have passion for what you're doing 
to be able to have the resilience. And that's, you look at Phil yeah. Knight with Nike, he had so much passion for what he was doing mm. that the resilience kept on coming. Mm. You know, resilience needs passion to be in hand in hand, doesn't it? Because if you don't really like what you're doing, if you're not passionate about what you're doing, you don't love the thing you're doing, the resilience leaves you too quick. Mm. D does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's passion first, resilience second for me, because the passion gives you the resilience, in, in my opinion. Um, the next thing that I think um, that I really wanted to touch on is a couple of things just to wrap this up, is peak performers, um, they give before they, 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 they give it, they're good at giving, then they start receiving in a big way. Mm. So when I started out my tiny little children's entertainment business, I would go and do schools, do sh magic shows at schools for free. And I gave my time for free. And then I got all these bookings on the back of it. Mm. Whereas most people that are not peak performers, and this is what I've, you know, they won't give their time up for it. They go, no, if I'm doing something, I've got to be remunerated for it now. Mm. I must get paid for it now. They're not prepared to give. So I give a little story of this. Um, Harry, who's a member of our family, my uncle Neil died really high up in Lloyds of London. And those that are watching internationally, Lloyds of London is our big insurance brokerage. He said to Harry, um, he got him a job when he was 17. And it, it, Harry was bright. He said to Harry, he said, make sure you wear a tie. Make sure you're first in and last out. Yeah. He said, because the people that run this company will see that. He said, give more than you receive. And mm. then in the future, the stuff that you receive back will be tenfold. Mm. He is now on serious money. He's like a leader in that company. He's like one of the youngest mm. directors in that company, etc., etc. He gave before he expected to receive. And I think that happens with peak performers. Yeah, it was coming from a place of service, isn't it? Being yeah. willing to contribute and yeah. to give to something that's greater than yourself. And I think that also ties into it the whole why you're doing things a lot yeah, of the times yeah, yeah. as well is I don't think I've ever met anyone that's truly successful that was doing something that they were just doing it only for their own benefit. Yeah. They were doing it that had an impact on others. Yeah. So. And then my last thing that peak performers do is they make a start. That's the, yeah. which most people don't do. They yeah. go, I will make a start when everything else is perfect. And nothing's ever perfect, is it? You know, it's... <laughs> fail, fail forward. Yeah. There is a magic in making a start, and that's and that's how I ended my presentation yesterday. I said, "Look, guys, you, if you want to be successful, just make a start. Mm. You know, take one step forward. You know, if you like our, our content journey, you know, we're more successful now than two and a half years ago when we started, or two years ago when we started doing this stuff." But we're only getting what we're getting to now. It's because we made a start two years ago. I, I couldn't agree more. My, my whole, everything that we do now, and there's quite a lot of plates that are spinning, all started because for two years I said, I'm going to do this when, yeah. when, when the moment, yeah. when I'm successful, when yeah, yeah, all of yeah. the stars have aligned, everything perfect. Absolutely, and all that's my point. Then, that's my point. I had this bit of a realisation and then what I actually did to start was I started posting one quote a day on social media, one yeah. motivational quote on social media. After a week, then I decided to do two a day. After um, a week later, I decided to write a blog. Then I decided yeah. to put it on a website the week after that. And before we know it, we've got sort of everything we're up to now. So, What's your favourite quote? That's how we could end this. Um, just my favourite quote is, there's no such thing as lack of resources, just a lack of resourcefulness. That That is... Brilliant. That is a brilliant one. I love that one. Let me just, um, I, I can't have had magic in making a start because that is, I just used that. Um, oh dear. What ones do I always say, Chuds? Don't put me on the spot. Don't put you on the spot. <laughs> this, is yeah, this is my idea, isn't it? Um, oh, here we go. This is because I, this one I've come up with in peak performance is a calm man is a wise man, especially when. It's all falling apart. You can mm. keep calm. You're a wise man. And the best thing that peak performers do, if anyone's watching this, they follow. There's a Rudolf Kipling poem called If. Yes. And if you go and read that video, uh, uh, read that poem after this video, you'll see that is, you know, what a calm man is a wise man. That poem is really how you should behave when the odds are against you and someone's being nasty about you and peak performers that I've met operate around the meaning of that poem and I think that really rounds this fantastic session up thank you very much Will it's been a pleasure really thank good. you um, we'll see you really soon bye bye